Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In a comment to a recent video, somebody suggested that I model the SR-72 slash Dark Star that I flew in Flight Sim and also apparently appeared in Top Gun Maverick. I haven't seen the movie yet, so uh, yeah. So I decided that it'd be an interesting challenge in terms of implementing the scramjet because as far as I know, nobody's implemented a scramjet in Kerbal Space Program before. I've more or less sort of imitated the rapier in a way, but the mode switching is a little bit different. It's a rather complicated thing. I have no idea how to do it with advanced jet engines. So we're using the stock system uh, for the engines and we are going to have a mode switch. So let me get the mode switch. So we have two modes for the engines. This is SR-72 mode 1 and SR-72 mode 2. You can see Max thrust is at Mach 2 right now. We might want to tweak that a little bit. And in mode 2, well, that's a problem, isn't it? <laughs> I hope that's not right. Um, hmm. Yeah, uh, I was hoping for more thrust at Mach 7, really. So we might have a problem, or it might be lying to me. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure whether it's lying to me or not. We'll find out. So, but anyway, we'll have a switch engine mode. After all, this is a test, and it'll probably take a lot of testing. So, I have not buy, brought it past Mach 1 yet. So, I have gotten it off of the runway in the first mode. So, I at least did that before introducing you to it. So, as far as parts go, there are five parts. There are the two engine pods. There's the body and the two vertical stabilizers, so those can actuate independently. Uh, unfortunately, because the body is a blended body, we're using a lifting body sort of me uh, mechanism, and that means we're not using FAR on it, because I have no idea how to implement a lifting body with FAR. So it's just one piece in order to make it seamless so that I can get the curves as right as possible, but there isn't exactly a schematic of this thing on the internet, so I was just sort of eyeballing it from Flight Sim, and or the Top Gun images, but it was just eyeballing, so I didn't get it exactly right. And on the internet, there are plenty of images of the SR-72, but they're all contradictory. So uh, I did my best, but I have put the landing gear here, which is not the greatest, but in terms of getting off of the runway, if we put any narrower, it'll wiggle around too much, especially since the vertical stabilizers are all moving. Uh, it tends to have a lot of yaw control and very little pitch control because these things are not very big and that's how they were on the model in Flight Sim 2. Uh, but uh, if uh, once I put this in the plane pack, you'll want to limit the authority of the vertical stabilizers because otherwise they're too strong. So keep that in mind. And yeah, oh, another thing. I scaled it up to how big the SR-72 is supposed to be and the thing is, in Flight Sim, they have it smaller. They have it uh, about half the mass of the SR-71, whereas it's supposed to be about the same mass as the SR-71. The SR-71 maximum takeoff weight is 78 tons. We're only at 50 right now. But the one in Flight Sim was about 30-ish. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've increased its mass, which means we've decreased its performance, but that's sort of to be expected. The one in Flight Sim had unreasonable amounts of range and also got to Mach 10 rather too easily. So I've interpreted the regular mode to be burning kerosene and the scramjet mode to be burning hydrogen. And that's another thing. They didn't really have space for fuel in the smaller one in Flight Sim. Uh, we do have barely enough volume for the fuel with this. So, and especially with the hydrogen, of course, volume is a tricky thing. Uh, the fuel load, the mass of the fuel that we have here is the same that it was in Flight Sim. So it's the exact same amount of fuel as far as mass is concerned. Okay, so, but we're heavier. So that's another thing. Um, maybe we want to be a little bit lighter or increase the fuel load since we are heavier. But actually, uh, uh, taking away the hydrogen, and I think it was uh, treating the hydrogen as not depleting. We Our dry mass is about 32 tons, which is like the maximum takeoff mass as the one, uh, of the one in Flight Sim. So anyway, let us take it outside and see how it goes.
Incidentally, the thrust that each engine produces in mode 1 is the same as the maximum thrust of the SR-71. So, yep, that is what it's based on. Anyway, throttle up, and we're using the atmospheric autopilot. Engage. Um, I have not worked on the plumes. <laughs> I have no idea. A rocket engine plumes are one thing, but I have no idea what kind of system to use for the jet engine plumes. Okay, I'm trying to pull up here gently though. Okay, well, we're off the ground. Oh, we're going back down again though. <laughs> uh, this doesn't have much pitch authority, like I said. Uh, up, up, up. Uh, don't, don't wiggle, don't wiggle. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, I think it's okay. I'm using a, uh, adjustable landing gear this time. I don't know whether that's better or worse. Okay, we are off the ground. But, yeah. Pitching up is hard. Pitching up is hard to do. I'll tell you one thing, there's no way this is anywhere as maneuverable as it would be in any movie. <laughs> so, uh, we're going rather slow now. Maybe I should accelerate first. Uh, we've had a flame out? Airflow outside specs. So I'm gonna have to check what that's all about. Um, why are there two intakes here? Now, it's interesting that I can hold it with just one engine. That's good to know. Uh, but we're losing speed. It is in kerosene mode. But it's producing very little thrust. They're both producing... Uh, I think the thrust curve needs to be adjusted because they're not supposed to be this low on thrust this soon. Uh, maybe we just didn't have enough speed. That seems to be working all right right now. Oh, let's try turning. Oh, I don't know what Clausen's view is. Well, I don't have uh, the interior is not done the way that it's supposed to be done. So it's just a normal Mark One cockpit in here. Hmm. I might need to put that fuel cell thing on. Because we don't have a lot of electric charge right now. We have about an hour's worth. Uh, it's shimmying a little bit. Oh, stop that. Okay. Well, yeah, it's still shimmying the vertical stabilizers for some reason. I'm gonna switch to SA. Oh, SAS definitely cannot hold this. Okay, SAS does not like this at all. This is definitely a plane that requires a fly-by-wire system, by the way. Time for stall recovery in the SR-72. It's got the nice vertical stabilizers which help with stall recovery, but I'm not feeling it right now, I'll tell you. I'm actually surprised the engine is still running with the airflow if one of them decided to quit earlier. Oh, let's check whether the scramjet mode works. We're probably going to die anyway. <laughs> um, here. Okay, we switched to the scramjet mode and it says airflow outside of specs. Well, that's correct. So, the scramjet mode does not work. We've verified that much. I mean, it doesn't work down here. We'll see. We'll have to see whether it works at better altitudes. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Um, can I pull up in time? This doesn't have enough pitch authority to pull up in time. Uh, uh, nope. Ooh, 30,000 meters per second. Uh, okay, well, we'll revive Clausen. And this time I'll try not to mess with anything. I don't know what why I was wiggling, though. Okay, uh... 
It doesn't like getting off the ground, I'll tell you. <laughs> but no, it wants to go back down already. Okay, okay, but at this speed it's okay. As usual, we need more speed. I, I could change the number in module lifting surface. It's not being calculated the way FAR does things. But the high, higher I make the lift, the more I make the drag as well. And that'll hurt us. So I, I could make getting off the runway easier, but that'll make breaking the sound barrier harder. And in general, breaking the sound barrier is gonna be harder with the stock module lifting surface than it would be with the far aerodynamic model. I'm just gonna not touch it and hope for the best here. Maybe y'all got out of whack when we lost that one engine. Okay, I think we're at a decent height to accelerate past Mach 1, so I'm going to level out here. We do have to pitch down to get past Mach 1, I'm pretty sure. Okay, Mach 1, but we have to continue pitching down because otherwise we won't hold above it. Okay, maybe I can pull up now. Carefully. We don't want to get into a thicker atmosphere. Uh, it doesn't look great though. We might need a little bit more juice. Or a little bit less dry mass. Yeah, we can't hold above Mach 1 right now. Let's try going... Uh, you know what? Let me not waste too much time. We'll just uh, give it more thrust and see how that helps out. After all, I just set it to what the SR-71 had for each engine. Uh, we'll assume that it can do a little bit more than that and see if that helps. Again, that's the max thrust there, but then of course there's the atmospheric curve and all sorts of other things that, uh, and you know, how much effective airspeed there is that adjusts our thrust based on that. So there's a whole lot of numbers going on. So let me try and tweak a few things and we'll come back and try it again. Okay, here we go again. I've upped the thrust to 180 kilonewtons baseline from 151, and I've also lightened the body a little bit. Not even gotta try pulling up until 100. Okay. Okay, we are off smoothly this time. I've learned my lesson. Okay, we are at 13 kilometers up and I'm gonna pitch down. We know it's supposed to do this, so... We are pitching down a bit. It's a little bit easier this time though. Well, this seems rather borderline still. We do have a lot of thrust. But it's going to take too much effort to really get to Mach 3 like this. Um, let me just see what happens when we switch modes here. Oh, oh, I, I hadn't uh, actually mapped it yet. Well, I'm going to switch it like this. Um, that's, it went back to kerosene? Hold on. Airflow outside specs still. Okay, well, I don't know if it'll ever get into specs. Okay, well, I'll uh, tweak it again and try and get it to a little bit of a better place so that we can accelerate. It was improved this time, but it wasn't enough. Uh, let's ignore the fact that uh, Clausen is probably going to perish like that and just revert. Okay, so one more time for this video. If it doesn't work this time, I'm going to have to go into more detailed numbers to make it work out. So, yeah, we've increased the thrust to 210 kilonewtons each now, uh, reduced the body by another ton. And I've also increased the efficiency of the engines because otherwise, if we don't do that, then increasing the thrust would mean that we have less burn time. So... 
few things. So, like, we've kept the fuel constant, otherwise reducing the body mass isn't going to help anything. Actually, uh, right now it might punch through Mach 1 without even needing to pitch down. We'll see. It's looking very powerful at the moment. Well, we have, in fact, exceeded Mach 1 while climbing. So we probably have a bit too much thrust, but honestly, uh, I don't think we can put it much lower than this and still expect to do what this is supposed to do. At this altitude and speed, we've basically got half the thrust. But that's fine because there's less drag, there's less air. It all balances out. Well, now we're going down a bit. I think I'll push it down a little bit more just to get past Mach 1.3. I don't know, there's... They might have to do with the atmosphere curve. There's a velocity curve and atmosphere curve for the engines, and I haven't messed with the atmosphere curve yet, but we might need to do that. We might to give it a little. Uh, we might want to give it a little bit more thrust based on where it is in the atmosphere. Going down severely really probably doesn't help. High dynamic pressure. Well, let's go higher first. Okay, well, now we're at 16,000 meters, 16 kilometers. Let's see how it does from here, approaching 17 kilometers. Okay, well, there's Mark 1, Mark 1 again. Let's just fizz warp and see if we can get through here. We have about half our kerosene remaining. Okay, now things seem to be going a little bit better. Uh, can I pull up before we hit the dense atmosphere? Okay, looking good. Alright, we're accelerating now. Okay, up. Alright, we made it through, barely. But maybe that's how it ought to be. Part of it was probably just because we're lighter without the extra fuel. Now, will the engines operate in the scramjet mode, as it were? We know they don't operate slow, so there's that. We need to get to Mach 3-ish. I don't know if it's going to get up to where we need to go. Yeah, it seems to be topping out at Mach 2.3-ish at the moment. That's not going to be good enough, and we're running out of fuel. So, some tweaking will need to be done. I'm gonna try switching the engine mode though at uh, Mach 2.3 and see what happens. Hopefully it's not gonna be completely out of its depth at that point. Uh, it might be though. Oh, yeah. No, it's just completely out. Uh... Well, it lost all that speed. That we worked so hard to get to. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, at least the scramjet doesn't work at slower speeds. I guess that's fair enough, but will it work at higher speeds? Well, first we have to get to higher speeds, so... That might have to wait until another video. But anyway, I am working on it. We are going to do further testing and we'll see how it goes, but 
There are a lot of moving parts to this, a lot of numbers to balance out properly to see if we can get it right. But yeah, for now, I'll just uh, that that drag is serious. But then again, it probably ought to be. Anyway. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.